The largest USA National Catan tournament just happened in 2021. And it was because of COVID. Because of COVID, they delayed it a year, so there's a double amount of entrance. And the competition for this tournament was extremely, extremely tough. It was so tough that with a single misplacement of a single road, many players lost. Oh, that's so close, but that's not right. Bro just says good game right here. Wow. Today, I'm gonna be showing you three such major mistakes and how some of these finalists managed to lose within the first turn. The first crucial mistake happens in the third pick of the board. But before we get there, let's go ahead and rewind back to the first position so you get the hang of the board. And you really are hoping for someone to make a mistake because looking straight ahead at 6 5 11, 8 9 4 on the top, and then the 8 9 11 right below that. Don't know this is the right choice. Bro. So in the first position, we have Bo Peng. He chooses that the 5 6 11 double or points his road to the coast. Uh, that was like pretty much all the good or in the game. The issue with that is. By the way, this is Bo Peng, the winner of the USA National Tournament. The second spot you get back, it might be pretty bad. And if people mess up their placements, I can actually get a really good uh, wheat spot coming back. But of course, so Bo settles 6 5 11 immediately. No surprise there. Yeah, I think the second pick and the third pick are a lot more difficult than the first pick. Then in the second position, we have Mary playing as white. She goes ahead and places on the 9-8-11. Once again, it's a four wheat cheap spot. It is a high producing spot on the board. Now in the third position, it gets a little bit trickier for Caleb playing as orange. He goes ahead and places on the 4-8-9, but he points his road to the 4-10, the wheat port. I was thinking like, why did he do that? Because uh, if he uh, looked further ahead, there's really not many places that I can place. Caleb placed the settlement on a high amount of wheat. And what he's planning to do is using a wheat port strategy where he gets a high amount of wheat and goes to the wheat port in order to convert that wheat into more valuable resources that are better, such as ore and sheep. But there's a problem. He doesn't actually have the wheat port yet. He needs to build to it. And if he doesn't get it, well, he's kind of screwed since now he's stuck with a bunch of wheat that he cannot do anything with. If you don't know what the main katana strategies are, don't worry. We'll go ahead and cover them in the second mistake. But for now, what you do need to know is that Caleb is in a do to die situation. Now in the fourth position, we have Katie placing as red. This is actually a very tough position. Go ahead and pause the video. What would you do in this position? Katie decides to place on the 8, 9, 12, and the 6, 3, 10, taking double brick and double wood. Okay, there we go, 6, 10, 3 to start. Now here we see the second big mistake. Instead of pointing downwards on the 6, 3, 10, you point left. And this one road change has a huge impact on Katie's game. So her plan is to utilize the double wood brick and the ports to be able to compensate for the lack of sheep and ore on the board. And she's also gonna try to go for longest road, but there are a lot of problems with this setup. The roads can't connect. So if it ever gets to that point, yeah, it, it's gonna be impossible for her to make it all the way across to the other road. The first problem is that the expansion spots aren't super strong and Katie isn't using her competitive advantage, which is road building. So if you're gonna take a wood brick setup, you have to think about how can I get strong expansion spots to bolster my game? Another problem, is that Katie doesn't have access to ore. And I think we've all been there where we have all five settlements down and along this road, and then it's just seven points. Yeah. There's nothing to be done. The, so. clean, the clean seven points that you stay at until somebody inevitably steals your road. Whenever you're lacking a resource, there's three things you can do. You can one, trade for it, pour for it, or build to it. Now, let's explore the three options. She can't really trade for ore because no one has extra ore that they can afford to give. And she's not really gonna build for it as she pointed her road downwards. That only leaves one option, which is porting for it. Katie is on the double brick, and she is pointed at the brick port, so she can go ahead and port her brick in order to compensate for the ore. A problem when relying on the port is that you're trading everything two for one. So essentially, you cut down your production by 50%, since all you're doing is converting two resources to one that you really need. But in this position, that's a problem because you're porting your brick, and that's basically road building material. You're essentially stripping yourself away of that competitive advantage of being able to build a lot of roads and expand to strong expansion spots. Here's a solution to Katie's placements while only changing one road. Instead of pointing downwards on the 6310, you go ahead and point left. And this one road change right here has a huge impact on her game. So Katie's first objective would be to build under the 6-2 ore. This goes ahead and quickly solves her ore problem. And she's utilizing her competitive advantage to be able to build to strong expansion spots. And then she can go ahead and drop in road sediment under the 6-2 brick port. So you're probably asking, why is a single road so impactful? Now, to get there, we first have to explain how does Katie win? Now, traditionally, there are four main Catan strategies. There's the Orwee Sheep strategy, where you go for the largest army. There's a the Wood Brick strategy, where you build a lot of settlements and roads. And there's a the Balance strategy, where you have both Orwee Sheep and Wood Brick. And lastly, there's the Port strategy, where you're on a high concentration of a single resource, and you go to that port. Caleb is actually trying to do that. But there's a fifth strategy that not many people talk about, and that's four cities, longest road. So Katie's winning condition with the setup is, well, 
builds four cities along this road. The beauty of this strategy is that this entire game, you only need two sheep, and that's for your first two settlements. Now, if you look at Katie's setup, it's very strong. She has a double brick with a brick port. She's doubled up on the wood with a wood port. She now has ore to match her wheat. Perfect for four cities along this road but there's actually an even stronger position for fourth position using this exact same idea. Instead of placing on the 8, 9, 12, you place on the 5, 9, 12, and you point towards the 8, 9. The 8, 9 brick will 100% be open because no one wants to take all that brick, especially since no one has wood at the moment. So now Katie's game plan would be to build on the powerful 8, 9. This goes ahead and leans into Katie's competitive advantage, which is building roads. Now, since she can build a bunch of roads very, very quickly, she can go ahead and expand very fast to the 6, 2, wood port. And then you go ahead and drop a road settlement onto the 6-2 brick port. And the reason why this is stronger is because she gives herself the crucial expansion spot, which is the 8-9. And she's now doubled up on wood and brick. This makes it so when she drops cities, it's now much, much stronger. With the double wood brick and the double ports, Katie will be very flexible and she's gonna have a lock on the longest road because, well, she has more wood brick than anyone else combined. Now, you might actually think the setup is pretty slow because you need to trade in order to get a settlement on the 8-9. And then you get your port active. But if you look at this board, sheep is a very common resource, which means it's going to be stuck in people's hand and going to be traded freely. But let's go back to the original placements. Katie didn't end up doing the setup, which means that she had a very, very, very tough game ahead of her for the rest of the finals. I personally think Katie basically lost within the first two moves, but it was a very difficult decision. The setup that she chose is very, very hard to win. Now, it's back to Caleb in the third position. Now remember, and he's going for the weak point strategy. Go ahead and pause the video here. Where would you go as Caleb? Caleb decides to go on a 3-8-10, and this is a catastrophic mistake, and he forgot to do one very important thing, which is predicting where your opponents are going to place. So if you look ahead, and if you place on the 8-3-10, which is what Caleb did, where will the next opponent, White, place? I think it's very reasonable to assume that White will choose the 5-3-11, as White is able to get more ore and 4-11, 3-1 port, giving her even more sheep. This sets up White for a very strong or weak sheep development card game. And now there's only one more settlement left inside the game and that's the blue player, Bo Peng, who's doubled up on ore and has sheep. Now, I say this in every video, but no wheat equals defeat. Bo needs wheat in order to survive. I had if someone uh, tries to point towards that wheat port, uh, they would have so much wheat. I basically end their game by taking the wheat port and I can probably trade them wheat uh, throughout the game since they'll have so much excess wheat or of course they can try to steal wheat from them. By Bo taking away the wheat port from Caleb, Caleb's hand now is going to be flooded with wheat. Perfect for Bo, as he's going to be dying to give away his wheat, otherwise it's going to be stuck within his hand. Let's go ahead and see what actually happens. Mayor decides to place on the 3-5-11, which is the right pick in my opinion. And lastly, we have Bo, who goes ahead and places on the 4-10 instantly. This is an absolute disaster for Caleb. He has a very, very tough game ahead of him. He has so much wheat, no ports, no wood to match his brick, and barely any more to support his wheat. He's gonna have multiple turns where his hand is totally stuck where he can't do anything. Caleb has basically lost the game within the first two moves. So how do we avoid this disastrous position for Caleb? You simply go on the 3-5-11. This spot complements your setup so much more. The 3-5-11 gives you wood to match with your brick in order to build roads. You get the same amount of ore you would have had with the 3-8-10. And if you point downwards, you get the 3-1 port on the 4-11, which gives you sheep that you're missing. And the 3-1 port is a savior in case you can't get the wheat port. But more importantly, the 3-5-11 is very good if you can predict where your opponents will place. If white decides to place on the 3-8-10, it's actually a secret death trap. Bo will go ahead and place in the 410, losing Caleb the wheat port anyways. The reason why I say it's a death trap for white is because they don't have any expansion spots. They're locked in the middle of the board. You typically need at least one settlement spot in order to win the game. Now, if you don't have any expansion spots, you're forced to get four out of the five victory points inside the development card deck. And that is very, very unlikely that you do. So a solution to the 3A10 is to instead place on the 3, 4, 10. And the reason why we do this is to create more space so white will get totally locked on the board. As now she has expansion spots to the 4, 3, maybe the 6, 2, and maybe the 3, 8, 12. Mary is still in danger of having no sediment spots, but the pressure is a little bit alleviated. Now in this situation, Bo can still choose a 4, 10, destroying Kayla's wheat port, or he can choose a higher producing 8, 10. And it's a triple shared wheat with three players, which means it won't be getting blocked very much. So if that happened, Caleb's wheat port on the 410 is now open, and he can go ahead and play a strong and effective game with the wheat port and his original plan. Another common situation is white taking the 5-9, getting all five resources in a starting road. Now this leaves Bo with a very strong pick of the 3-8-10, but for Caleb, what it means is the 410 wheat port is once again open, and it'll help his game quite a lot. But in the actual game, Caleb took the 3-8-10, doubling down on the wheat port strategy and losing the game instantly. If you want this full game analysis, let me know in the comments below.
And if you want to see more tournament analysis like this, then click here.